All right, in the previous two modules, we have talked about localization techniques. Uh, in the next two modules, we're going to talk about perception. Uh, in this context, perception really means how do you perceive or understand uh, the environment around the vehicle. For example, how do you detect pedestrian? How do you detect cyclist? Uh, how do you detect cars around you? How do you predict uh, uh, the, the trajectory of the moving objects and so on? And these are very important to the safety of the autonomous vehicle. So let's go into detail. Uh, and specifically in this module, we're going to focus on uh, traditional techniques. And then in next module, we're going to talk about deep learning based techniques. But uh, the tasks are very similar. Uh, for, uh, it's the techniques that, that are different. Uh, how do we approach these problems that, that are different. So first, uh, before we dig into the uh, technical details, uh, let's talk about the data sets. Because each time you uh, develop a new algorithm, uh, if you put it in the car and then test it on the road, it will be very expensive. For example, if you have a new uh, pedestrian detection algorithm, then uh, if the way you test it is to uh, drive the car around and then see if your algorithm detects the, the, the people on the road, it, it, first it will be very dangerous. Uh, second, it will be very expensive and you don't gather enough data. So uh, to solve this problem, we actually use data sets. And there are several standard data set that's targeted for autonomous driving. The most famous one being the KITI, K-I-T-T-I, the KITI data set. So the KITI data set actually provides uh, many different uh, subsets of data uh, to test different algorithms. The first one is the, the so-called stereo and optical flow data set. And then we'll explain that later, later uh, what I mean by stereo and optical flow and what's the use of it. The second one is a visual autonomy data set. This one we already talked about, uh, such that you can use visual information uh, to derive the, uh, the translation of your card, or the localization change of your card. And then we talk about detection and tracking data set at the end. Uh, that's used for uh, how, how you can detect the pedestrians on the road and so on. So yeah, keep in mind, we can start with a uh, kitty data set when you do a uh, perception. Then let's move on to object detection. The first task when you drive a car on the road, uh, if it's an autonomous vehicle, you want the vehicle to detect what's in front of it or what's surrounding the vehicle, such that it can uh, determine whether that's safe to go straight or you should uh, make a turn and so on. Um, so let's talk about two algorithms used for this purpose. The first one is how do you detect a uh, rigid object, such as a car in front of you. Uh, one promising way of uh, uh, tra using traditional machine learning method, it's called the Hawk plus SVM. Uh, Hawk meaning the histogram of orientation. It's a way to detect features, uh, to extract features from an image. And then based on the feature points you extracted from the image, you do a classification to determine whether it's a car in front of you or it's, it's something else in front of you. So we use the Hawk, H-O-G, uh, for feature extraction, then we do some more processing. After that, then we do a classification problem, use the support vector machine, SVM, uh, such that we can determine whether it's a car or not. So you can see the, the pipeline here uh, on the slide. And then there's some objects, those are non-rigid, such as human. When you move, your hands move, uh, um, and then your bodies may st stay uh, kind of static while your hand is move, moving freely. So these are non-rigid objects. How do we detect these non-rigid objects? We have some uh, traditional algorithms for that as well. Uh, we have an algorithm called deformable part model, DPM, such that it detects different parts from your body, such as the hand, uh, the arm, and then the, the main body itself. And then they combine all these things together and then treat it as a whole, uh, such that we, uh, by using this technique, we can detect the, hu uh, the whole human body. Um, so that's the, the DPM technique we use to uh, detect uh, non-rigid objects. And then that's it. That's uh, the main pipelines for object detection. And then the second problem is segmentation. So you, you have a picture, for example, uh, the one here. And then you want to uh, mark on the pictures that these are the roads, and those are the people, and these are the cars. You want to kind of give meanings to every object on the scene. And you want to cluster these objects to uh, represent something, say for example, the road. So that problem is called the segmentation problem. Then how do we do segmentation traditionally? Uh, we use a graph. Uh, what we use something called the conditional random field, uh, which is a graph of uh, different items. And then if you can see here, it's uh, basically a table with uh, many grid cells. Each grid cell actually uh, represents a pixel or a super pixel, a group of pixels. Then you kind of group these things together and say, hey, these groups of pixels, they are one kind of objects. Uh, so they are one segment. And then the, the edges on, on this graph, they are constraints. Uh, and then the, also there are the spatial relationships between these grid cells. 
So using this CRF technique, we can kind of uh, segment a scene, a picture into different parts so that uh, the vehicle can understand what it's seeing. Maybe it can tell that's the road and that's a, pe uh, that's a moving person and so on. So segmentation is another very important problem in uh, uh, perception. The next one uh, is what we call the stereo uh, and then optical flow and scene flow. Uh, first, what is stereo? We actually uh, have gone through this problem before in localization. When you have two cameras, you can derive the depth information of space. Uh, so that uh, when you take a normal picture, it's uh, one camera, you have 2D information in, in the scene. But if it you have two cameras, you can derive the, the depth information of each point in this scene uh, so that you get a spatial model of what you see. Uh, then optical flow is next. Optical flow means uh, you have two pictures and then you can see this pixel has moved to uh, this point, so uh, you can derive this 2D movement from a optical flow algorithm. And scene flow is actually for 3D movement. You, it's like uh, the visual automation we discussed before, so that using the scene flow, uh, you can track a movement of a car in front of you, so you can perceive the, uh, the other car's movement uh, using this technique. So remember, it's stereo flow, optical flow, and scene flow. That's for uh, tracking movements of different parts in the environment. And then object tracking, once you detect that there's a person in front of you, the next thing you want to do is to uh, predict its movement uh, or to track its movement. Uh, this can be done using a visual technique as well. Uh, the technique we use here is called uh, Markovian Decision Process or MDP, such that if you see in the picture, it has different states of a person. Uh, it can track the state of a person as it moves along the picture, such that you can uh, say, hey, this person is very likely to go to this point in the next second, so that if I can uh, move the car to the left, I can avoid uh, any collision, a potential collision or accident with a, a person. So that's the key of this technology, it's object tracking, so that you can track the moving parts of, the, uh, uh, of uh, people or other cars. Okay, so that's a pretty short uh, overview of all these uh, uh, perception technologies using traditional techniques and that's our uh, first perception module. In the next module we're going to talk about deep learning techniques used for perception purposes.